Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing day. In today's video, I'm gonna review one of the two close-up lenses that Nisi sent me. They hit me up in an email a couple of weeks ago and they asked me whether I'd be interested in making a review video and I said for sure. I was only expecting the 77 millimeter kit, but they were kind enough to send me both and I'll be reviewing the 58 millimeter close-up lens first. I'm not being paid by Nisi and this is gonna be an honest, unbiased, in the field test where I'll be mainly focusing on the actual results, emphasis being on image quality rather than going into technical details. First I'm going to be testing it with one of my go-to macro lenses which is the Canon 100mm macro lens and then we'll have a look at how much more magnification we can get out of a kit lens such as the 18 to 135mm IS Nano USM which came with my APS-C camera, the ATD. So without further ado, let's get this testing started. All right, here we are at the local nature reserve. I'll be testing, as I said before, with my Canon 100mm macro lens on the Canon ATD, along with the 600EX RT2 flash and my usual reflector diffuser kit. If you want to know my entire setup, I will leave a link to every single product that I own and I've been using for quite some time. So feel free to check those out as well. So let's get on with the testing. We find our first subject, which are the larvae of honey brown beetles. I'll be shooting everything at the maximum magnification on this lens, which is one to one. I'm expecting the magnification ratio to go up considerably. Also the minimum focusing distance, which is the distance from the imaging or focal plane in the camera to the subject and also the working distance which is the distance of the subject from the front element of the lens both of these distances will be considerably shorter i'm shooting everything at f14 the shutter speed is going to be 180th of a second and the iso is 200 just to start with i'm not going to be stacking just taking single shots i'm going to bump up the iso too 400. I want to stay under 800 on this APS-C sensor because the noise level is This looks really nice and sharp. At this magnification ratio you would have to start stacking because you are so close to the subject and the depth of field is super shallow. I've spotted another subject, tiny little spider, but now I've lost it. Oh, there's something else here. I think it is a um, non-biting midge, a very small one. spotted a tiny little fly but I'm gonna switch to infinity because I don't want to get too close because I think it's gonna be too skittish I'm gonna try and capture it now I'm really happy that this uh, close-up lens works when uh, we focus at infinity as well so the uh, working distance is considerably larger or longer oh wow so many birds. I'm gonna try capturing these flies again, but this time I'm gonna get a little bit closer. Luckily the fly didn't take off this time. They're usually really skittish, especially with this working distance. I was super close to it and I kept bumping into the vegetation. From what I can see from the back screen, so far the image quality has been exceptional. Really nice tech sharp, but we gotta do some more testing. Let's find our next subject. I find a super tiny subject, a burly gig mite crawling on this blade of grass. They are considerably smaller than a centimeter, so they would be a great test subject for this particular setup. We finally got a decent shot of a tiny little whirligig mite on one of these blades, so I'm really stoked. I have found a pretty cool subject. It's a decaying leaf with all the beautiful veins that network still relatively intact. I'm gonna try and take a picture of this right now at maximum magnification. I've spotted a few ants on this branch and I think they are monomorium ants, monomorium kiliani, most likely. I have captured them before, but obviously not with this setup. I can see a rather large mosquito over there. Wow, so sharp, beautiful. I'm gonna try and get as close as I can. The maximum magnification ratio is gonna be hard because 
I can't afford to bump into anything. I found a small spider, most likely an orb beaver of some sort. I've already taken a shot at infinity focus. I'm gonna try and capture it again, this time at maximum magnification. I found a really large tetragnata. Oh, it's a bit scared. Walk around and try it from this side. Oh my God, those legs are so long. This is at infinity. The focus is perfect right on the eye. And now I'm gonna try to get as close as possible at maximum magnification. It's gonna be a little bit difficult. I think it's gonna get scared, but let's try. So far, I'm super happy with the results. Working at this magnification ratio can be quite challenging. So even if you move a little bit, the focus can be thrown off. So you gotta be very careful and you have to stay as steady as possible. That's why I usually lock my uh, elbow in and then just swing in and out. I'm gonna head back home now. Now that we have taken enough uh, images, I'm gonna replace my Canon 100 millimeter macro lens with the kit lens. Got my second setup uh, ready. Now I've got the 18 to 135 millimeter IS Nano USM attached and uh, it's already set to 135 millimeter. The only difference uh, that you might have noticed or might have spotted is that I replaced the diffuser panel to the larger one that I normally use the Galawa 25 millimeter macro lens. This one just suits this particular lens better or this lens barrel, especially when the uh, front element is fully extended. I usually tend to find a lot of um, jumping spiders on these yakas. I've got it set to the maximum magnification that we can reach with this particular setup. Let's see how we go. I have found a small jumping spider that's just resting right over there. Let's try and capture it. Hopefully it's not gonna be too skittish. I also managed to capture another specimen a little later on the Swiss cheese plant. I have found a long-legged fly just over here, but they are super skittish, especially when the flesh goes off. But this one tends to return to the same spot, so I'm gonna try and grab a decent enough frame. I'm gonna try and capture it from a different angle, maybe from here. I have found some exec or some cocoon type of structure right here on this Cobweb. It looks so interesting with those little spiky protrusions. Let's take a picture of something that's much easier, static subject. There's a tiny little mite on this leaf. If it stops just momentarily, I'll be able to grab one shot and then we can compare it to the shot that I took with my 100mm macro lens. Even though the image on the right is slightly cropped on the 100mm macro, you can see significantly more detail. Alright, I'm gonna try and get this back. Let's take a picture of this beautiful violet. Have to turn it a little bit to get the entire subject in the frame. Here you can see a little bit of vignetting, but I normally tend to crop in, so it wouldn't be an issue in most scenarios. I have found a super small spider, just right there resting on leaves. Sorry about the noise, let her face our neighbor is probably cutting up people into tiny little pieces. I'm gonna try and capture some shots of this beautiful lichen. It's growing on our fig tree. For this next subject of ours, which is a tiny little beautiful flower right here, I had to enable high speed sync because I wanted to increase the shutter speed to 250th of a second. The aperture remained the same, f14, and we are using base ISO. We've got multiple little hunt spiders in this corner. They live in small aggregations. I'm gonna try and grab a shot of a single specimen that just captured something. I can see some sort of prey. I 
transported the colony of ants as well. They are just marching up and down on this uh, fence post. Here I can see one that's killing a dead specimen. I also captured another one carrying an egg. Alright, let's summarize what I think about this 58mm close-up lens from Nisi. First, I'd briefly like to touch on the excellent build quality. It's made out of brushed aluminium and it feels really great in the hand. It's got a bit of weight to it, which is usually indicative of a high quality product. It does not have that kind of plastic feel at all. I almost forgot about the cool protective patch, which is hard case, and it also features a loop, so you can attach it to link points, for example, on your camera bag. The lens also has two snap-on plastic caps to further protect it, and the zippers are high quality as well. This particular kit included two adapter rings, step down rings to 49 and 52 millimeters respectively, but I used the step up ring from 58 to 67 millimeter, which made it compatible with the lenses that I tested this close up lens with. The glass itself has performed beautifully, in my opinion. The special epichromatic design results in no apparent chromatic or spherical aberration, and the multi nano coating also further improves the overall image quality. Most of the shots that I got with both setups were very sharp with the 100 millimeter prime macro obviously taking the crown in terms of overall sharpness i was really pleased with the results with that particular combination the maximum magnification ratio was essentially doubled and the minimum focusing distance was only slightly shorter than at the default one-to-one -one magnification both the minimum focusing distance and the working distance was slightly longer with the kit lens which was to be expected made it slightly easier to work with but i'm used to shooting at much higher magnification all the way up to 5x so it wasn't really a struggle so again the sharpness was exceptional especially in the center of the frame but the fall off towards the corners was pretty negligible as well the colors were great it didn't affect color reproduction at all what i found really useful is that i could also set the focus to infinity which allowed me to capture my subjects in their natural environment and then with just a simple turn of the focusing ring i could switch to a higher magnification ratio with the kit lens i just used it at the highest magnification in all instances i didn't take exact measurements as to how much the the fall 0.219x magnification was increased but I assume that it has doubled that which is pretty decent. There is essentially only one negative that I noticed when setting up the lens with the adapter especially with the kit lens the adapter ring seemed to be stuck on the filter thread of the lens and it was quite difficult to remove and I prefer to remove the whole setup the whole shebang in one single swoop so I suggest you don't screw it onto the front element of the lens too tight because then you're gonna struggle moving it. Again, I'm super happy with the product. To be honest with you, I wasn't expecting such great results at this particular price point, so I can highly recommend it to anyone with a standard zoom lens and kind of break into the world of macro, or if you already own a macro lens, then further increase the magnification ratio of that without compromising image quality. I hope you find this review useful. If you have any feedback or are unsure of something, then please get in touch, leave a comment down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll be also testing the 77mm kit very soon, so keep an eye out for that if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and see you guys very soon in the next one.